to Yes Education Special IT and Engineering webinar uh, in co collaboration with uh, University of Canberra. Uh, my name is Bo O'Brien, uh, coming to you live from Ho Chi Minh City uh, in Vietnam on what is a very beautiful morning here. Uh, I'd like to welcome all of our students uh, here today and all of our partners uh, listening, to, uh, listening in today. And thank you for, uh, for taking your time. And I hope um, this will be a session of great uh, benefit uh, to you. Um, today we're going live uh, on Zoom and also I welcome our Facebook Live uh, followers as well. It's a pleasure to have you here uh, today. Um, thank you for getting up uh, early wherever you are. We'll have listeners from all over uh, the Asia Pacific and I would like to in particular welcome our uh, Vietnamese uh, students here today. Um, University of Canberra is a university that needs no introduction. It is a world-class uh, university in Australia's capital city. It has built a reputation for being at the forefront for uh, scientific discoveries and development of uh, emerging technologies in Australia. It's certainly a, a very exciting place for, for students to be. And I look forward to talking to you about that today. So today, uh, we are very grateful, actually, to have such a distinguished list of guests, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce the panel today. First and foremost, uh, we have with us today uh, Dr. Wan Ni Ma. He is the head of school uh, of IT and systems at the University of Canberra. Uh, and uh, Dr. Wan Ni Ma, he received his PhD uh, in computer science and technology uh, from ANU. Uh, in Canberra as well, back in 2001. And he had eight years of first-hand experience in running IT infrastructure, IT security operations, um, and digital forensic investigation before uh, joining the Faculty of Information and Science uh, and Engineering in 2004. Uh, his research areas uh, are of application nature and mainly concentrate on the application of machine learning and artificial intelligence techniques uh, into cybersecurity, uh, anomaly, uh, intrusion, spam email, virus, uh, etc. Uh, discovery, detection, internet identity management, uh, digital evidence gathering and, and analysis, and human biological signals. Uh, today we also have Saira Ambrose. Uh, she is the uh, UC student ambassador uh, who is a current student uh, of Bachelor in Software Engineering. Um, I'll be talking to her today. Uh, a little bit about the experience at UC. Um, we also have uh, Mr. Tuen Ang Nguyen, uh, who, is an, uh, who is also another student uh, at UC uh, who is studying Bachelor of IT. Uh, he is the former president of the UC uh, Vietnamese Student Society, so he will be another uh, great member today to talk to uh, you all today about the experience, the culture, and um, the general lifestyle uh, on campus. Uh, we're also very, very lucky today to have with us uh, Yen Pham and Amy Lei, who uh, are the representatives of UC. Um, they will pro be providing us today with uh, overall assistance uh, with the webinar, and uh, they'll be happy to assist you with any of the questions um, that you have related to UC um, products, courses, uh, school fees, uh, requirements, uh, um, things related to that, um, they will be available later on uh, in the session to assist you with that. Um, so just on today's schedule, uh, today's schedule is very simple. Um, after my intro here, uh, we will start off with a presentation uh, from Dr. Wan Ni Ma, uh, who will go into detail with um, more IT and engineering. Um, and I will follow up um, with a few uh, quick Q&A. Um, I will then enter a panel discussion uh, with Saira uh, and followed by uh, Twen An, uh, just to understand and highlight some of the student experiences that UC has to offer. Um, we will then have a quick, quick presentation from Amy Lei, who will uh, give us um, you know, the latest uh, and new information um, with UC and in particular, uh, online study, study options for semester two. Um, finally, we will finish up with a, a Q&A um, with our audience here today. So uh, please have your thinking caps on, um, you know, and maximize the opportunity that we have today to have such a great panel 
um, and just for you to really understand more about UC. That's what we really want to, to do today, to give you that opportunity. It's one of the top universities in Australia. Uh, there's not many opportunities like that to have great uh, discussion with um, so many distinguished guests here today. Um, just to, another quick reminder, uh, we, are, we are using Zoom uh, and Facebook, so uh, questions are open. Um, those that are familiar with Zoom, you, you'll know that there are, uh, there's a function uh, where you can ask questions in, in the chat box. So we do encourage all of you to ask as many questions as you can. There will be time for it. Um, and if you, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's really a good time to, um, to ask questions to, to everyone here today. So uh, that's, that's it from me now. And I would like to call uh, Dr. Wan Li Ma. Uh, if I, I think he's online here now. Um, so Dr. Wan Li Ma, are you there? Yep. That's great. How are you today? Good. Thank you, Bo. Thank you for the wonderful that's great. introduction. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, thanks for joining us today. And we're, uh, we're all very lucky to have you here. And we're very, uh, very interested to hear from your uh, presentation. And um, I'll, I'll pass it on to you now. I think you have a presentation there and you can, you can share your screen and um, we'll get started. Thank you very much. I'll share the screen now. Perfect. Can you see the screen? It's just loading now, should be, should be okay. Coming. It's coming up. Yes, there it is. Okay. All ready to go. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Uh, Wan Ma from Canberra, Australia. Warmest greetings from Canberra winter. Uh, out of my tr uh, window, I can see trees in golden color uh, with the falling <laughs> leaves. A very beautiful Canberra morning. Uh, thank you very much for your time and opportunity for me to share with you our courses, our teaching, and also the industry, uh, IT industry, in next uh, 10 or 20 years. So I'll start with talking to you about where the industry is going. Uh, you can draw from your own experience, and then I will uh, explain why it is important and relevant to study IT and engineering courses. Now afterwards, I'll talk about our courses, uh, how we design our courses, our education philosophy, and also our student activities. Let me go to the next page. Okay, um, I'm sure each of you has an iPhone in your pocket. And these days, you might want to give up a party, or give up a beautiful cloth, or give up a mule, but you wouldn't want to give up your mobile phone. You can have try, just give up your mobile phone for a day, see how life looks like. 30 years ago, we didn't have this. But now, a mobile phone is basically part of our life. We can't separate from our life. With a mobile phone, it's not just about its entertainment. It's the way you do your business. It's the way you live. It's just part of your life. It is fundamentally change our society. Uh, any opportunity, when it comes, when it creates, it creates disruption. So basically, we are moving towards a new technology, new society. This is so-called digital disruption. Um, if you look at on the screen, some brand names are so familiar to you, you can tell from Uber, you don't need taxi drivers. So it has great disruption to the taxi driver, uh, taxi industry. If you look at Airbnb, it has great disruption to the hotel industry. If you look at online shopping, the traditional corner shops has greatest disruption. So we call this as disruption because it is the disruption caused by the technology. Well, on the other hand, for any change with disruption, it creates opportunities. So for the future generation of professionals, it's a time for you to think where I will be in the future. Do I 
want to be on the side to be disrupted by the technology or do I want to design my future to be on the side to uh, have a secure um, perspective careers in next 10, 20, 30 or 40 years. Now let's just look at the job landscape in Australia. Um, my screen is on my side, so I will look on the side. Uh, if you look at here, the, uh, there's a timestamp. That was last year. The estimation in Australia was there will be 10,000 jobs on technology in the next five years. Uh, if you look at here, just by local IT graduates, and the skilled migrants are known even not be able to meet the demand because the technology is booming. And this is estimation by Australia Computer Society, uh, which predicts the job growth. You can see it's future strong growth in technology sector. Well, over here, this is estimation by PwC about future job profile. You can see basically we talk about half of today's job is going to be at risk. So this is so-called job, digital disruption to jobs. Okay, that in the last three years, you can see 33,000 technology jobs has been created. What that mean? That mean there will be unprecedented needs for graduates in IT and engineering fields. Now, as we all are of uh, avoidable need facing this COVID-19 situation, while well, COVID-19 causes great disruption to many industries. We couldn't imagine before this uh, uh, COVID-19 situation, big airlines being brought into their knees. They can't operate. And um, all pilots, air crews, they have to wait at home, wait until we have the situation under control. We could never be able to imagine that. But on the other hand, just during this period of time, IT jobs are soaring. Are booming. You can see this just a few uh, piece of uh, news I pick up from Australia. You can see that's 6th of May, demanding for technology and talent post COVID 19. You can see 27th of April, 20th of April, 23rd of April, just lately. You can see that's 20th May. So IT professional vacancies. So, what does that mean? That means they need people to be in this field. On the other hand, that also means if we are graduates in the field, there are many jobs for us. Well, if we don't have enough graduates, that means higher salaries for us because people are competing for us. Now, if you think this is where you want to go, you want to study IT, you want to become an engineer, and there are so many universities, almost every single university, that offer IT courses, they offer engineering courses. Now you must, you might, might ask, why do, do I want to go to University of Canberra? What's so different from University of Canberra? Okay, so fundamentally, our graduates are among the best in the world, the best graduates. It's not because we claim we are the best, it's because our teaching philosophy Okay, our teaching philosophy is um, teaching uh, students as professionals in training rather than treat you as students. So what we don't tell you, uh, you study required units, you study inactive units, we have enough units, you graduate. We tell you from day one, you are professional, you are in training, you have a job in your mind, you want to study for this job. Therefore, the way we teach you is you are professional and you are here to be trained as a professional, to be world ready, job ready, and future ready. To fulfill that, we have very close relationship with the industry. Every year, we have a course advisory sessions. We hear experts from industry. We we'll ask them to tell us what kind of graduates are you, you are recruiting? What kind of skills you need? We we'll review our courses on a yearly basis. Every year we have a, a small revision. Every two years we have a big revision to make sure our courses are 
word relevant. It's always stay in front of a guy. Well, you may know um, if you're not talk about university courses, you may know a coach in sports field can make major difference for the athletes. If you have a good coach, you can unlock your full potential. This is what we do. We look at your full potential. We want to unlock your full potential. When you graduate, you will be world ready, regardless where you go. You can handle all the challenges. You will be job ready, you're ready for jobs. You will be future ready, regardless of how the digital disruption bring to us, you can fulfill uh, the requirements, you can face the challenges, you can conquer all the difficulties. So that is why we are confident with our teaching, and that's why we have a very high employee rate of our graduates. Now, I'll just give you an example, and this teaching philosophy, how we design our courses. So our flagship course, Bachelor of Information Technology, you can see we don't grab, we don't group our units as first year, second year, third year. We group our units as a core, a specialist major, and breadth or second specialist major. So with a core and a specialist major, you will be a professional. You have minimum skills to be a professional in the industry. After the two majors, you have a choice to be uh, to deepen your skills, get uh, your second specialist major, let's say in cybersecurity, in artificial intelligence, or in IoT, or you can choose breath, your brilliant, um, um, open your horizon, uh, broaden your skills. You can study legal, you can study accounting, you can study multimedia, you can study uh, marketing, therefore you have broadest possible skills to be job ready. So you have choices. That is and the philosophy of we teach. So under this philosophy, we are very confident our graduates are in high demand. But indeed, they are. Our students start to get jobs in their second year. So very often in second year, they get part-time jobs, they get full-time jobs, they become part-time students. So that, that, that's why uh, they are so in high demand because they think themselves as professionals. They don't think themselves as students. Now this slide just give you uh, some uh, explanation of what those majors are, what core majors is, what specialist major is, what the in-depth major is. I'm not going to go uh, re read this for you because I'll explain to you uh, the three groups of majors. Uh, now just uh, say, you, you might be convinced that I want to study IT, but which course do I study? Is that IT for me? Okay, so basically what we say is, we have a course for everybody. Anybody can study IT. Okay, so now you have the will, the willingness, you will be successful in IT. Because IT knowledge is flat. It's very flat structure, it's very flat. Okay, so you, you can pick up the skills, so long the only ingredients for being successful is your willingness. Now we have five courses at the bachelor level, bachelor of IT, bachelor of business informatics, bachelor of software engineering, and two bachelor of engineering courses. If I say simply, uh, bachelor of IT, the flagship course, it has balanced coverage between business side of IT and the technical side of IT. So it's a very balanced uh, course. If you can't make your decision which course to study, this is the best one to start with. It's a most broad course. After the first year, if you see yourself being more on business side of IT, you can stay uh, in the course or you can transfer into Bachelor of Business Informatics. Or if you see yourself as more technical side of IT, you can go back to you can transfer to Bachelor of Software Engineering, or you can stay with the Bachelor of IT. So basically, Bachelor of IT is a course of balanced uh, coverage. Bachelor of Business Informatics is a course 
focus on business side of IT. Uh, those are the people who use IT to drive changes in business. Uh, business Bachelor of Software Engineering is a course for those people who are going to create new technologies. So those graduates, they are going to be the next creators or inventors of Google, next inventors of uh, eBay, uh, Wikipedia, whatever the technology you can think of. Engineering courses, they are four years. They're very prestige because it covers business side, technical side with four years come with embedded owners. You will feel very proud when you graduate. You tell people, I graduated, I graduated with Bachelor of Engineering, first class, owners, division Y. That's the best of the best. So now you give people your CV, you have first class, owners, division Y, then jobs are coming looking for you rather than you looking for jobs. So basically what we say is, we have a course for everybody. It's a time for the next generation of professionals to think how you are going to turn in digital disruptions to digital opportunities to design your future, stay on the foolproof side for the next 10, 10 20, 30 years. But it, it, that next 10 years, 20 years or 30 years are your time, your generation, you are taking to central stage. You are driving the change of society. You think about yourself, think about the future of your society, think about the future of your nation, your countries, think about the whole world you are going to drive the change. Now I'm going to show you this uh, one and a half minutes video, which has all the photos of our award ceremony. All the awards are sponsored by industry partners. Some small, some big, small even just are the best in a unit, big as best in a year or best in the whole course. The, there's uh, also some audio which comes from um, Canberra local radio when we talk about our courses. So enjoy the video. The best way to predict the future is to invent it. So stop waiting and start creating your future with an IT degree specialising in artificial intelligence and robotics from the University of Canberra. Don't miss your chance to forge a career in a booming industry. From driverless cars to a career in the stars, the possibilities are endless with an IT degree from the University of Canberra. Technology has revolutionized the way we live, and information is tomorrow's currency. Don't miss your chance to forge a rewarding career in one of Australia's fastest growing industries with a degree specializing in cloud computing and the Internet of Things from the University of Canberra. From smarter homes to a smarter universe, the possibilities are endless with an IT degree from the University of Canberra. The world is changing. With digital transformation comes threats to our security. So what can we do to protect ourselves? Lead the fight against cybercrime with a degree specialising in cybersecurity at the University of Canberra. Learn the digital forensic skills needed to defend against cyber threats. From personal protection to global detection, the possibilities are endless with a degree in IT from the University of Canberra. Big data is big business and big opportunities await in one of Australia's most in-demand careers. Learn how to translate data into practical insights with a degree specialising in data science from the University of Canberra. Turn guesswork into knowledge and navigate... The best way to predict the future... The best way to predict the future is to... Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening and the future is yours. It's your decision. And I'm looking forward to see you come to University of Canberra to change in the world. Join us to join the revolution to change in the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Those, it's such an inspiring uh, presentation you gave. It's great to hear um, you talk about the future, really. It's, there's so much, uh, so much to offer and um, IT is definitely um, one of the leading and if not the most uh, important industry going into um, the rest of this century. And um, it's great to see also that you mentioned that anyone can study IT. I think it's a, a program that um, anyone from any background can get into, um, which is also incredibly encouraging too. And it's great that you, that you mentioned as well, 
um, of the opportunity to, to drive um, your country. So whether you stay in Australia or head back to your, your home country, it's great to be at the forefront of, of change as well, like you say. Um, I've got a few quick questions for you, some quick fire questions, because we need to um, move on. Um, first question I wanted to ask yeah. is um, what, what would be the, um, if, if a student was interested in uh, artificial intelligence, um, for example, which IT courses would you, would you suggest at UC? Thanks. That's a very uh, good question. We have a uh, similar question all the time because uh, artificial intelligence is pretty much in everybody's mind at least in these days. Mm. Uh, it depends on how you want to drive the technology. So we talk about whole spectrum, just like I talked about IT course from business application. You use artificial intelligence to change the way business operating all the way to you invent new artificial intelligence uh, techniques. So to start with, I would suggest the Bachelor of IT, which is where uh, the course with a balanced approach, which gives a balanced coverage of business needs and also technology side. Well, if a person has a strong mind, I really want to use a technology to change business. So that Bachelor of Business Informatics is a choice. But to start with, I would say Bachelor of IT is the best choice. Well, all the way towards up end, you want to change in the technology, you want to change, invent a new artificial intelligence techniques, then you might want to go to Bachelor of Engineering and prepare to go master by research and a PhD. Just lately, one of our PhD graduates, uh, he studied Bachelor of IT, uh, Master of IT research, and a PhD. He went to a largest retailer chain shop in Australia, which is called Woolies. Uh, it's the largest retailer. Uh, it's a grocery shop in Australia, something like a Costco, or uh, I don't know the biggest retailer in Vietnam. He went there. Uh, he uh, analyzed sales data every day and helped mm. the business come up with. Uh, strategies uh, for next week, for next month. So any course will get you into the um, industry and then depends on your preference, depends on where you want mm. to drive change. You can go any mm. of the courses. And another thing that we get, Doctor, is that um, some students are a little bit worried about their mathematics level. So some students, um, uh, what would you say, which course requires less mathematics or less um, mathematics intensive? And which course would you say maybe stay away from if you're not very good at mathematics or average mathematics? Um, which course would, would, would require the highest level of maths? Uh, uh, generally, when we talk, we talk math in a generic way. So math actually is a big field, covers everything. Yes. What I say is uh, IT math is very different. You may all heard of uh, computers running on so-called binary. So from computer point of view, if you can count zero and one, you have enough math to study IT. <laughs> uh, when you come to uni, because uh, IT math or computer math, which is very different from the way you study in high school or colleges, we call something called discrete math. Now we will teach you from beginning and completely new branch of math. You never had this math in your high school or primary school. You hardly touch even a real number or natural number. You will stay mostly zero and ones. So math is the way to help you to think. It's not the condition to get into IT. So long you have your logical thinking, don't really have to worry too much about calculus, uh, metrics you have at the moment. We are going to teach you from very beginning a uh, new branch of math, which is called discrete math, where you will study logic, you study zeros, you study ones, you will study graph, you will study set of theories. Mm -hmm. They're very different. So don't have to worry yeah. about math at all. That's great to know. <laughs> so um, my final question for you would be, you've been, 
you've been inside academia for such a long time. Um, and my question for you would be, um, what students, uh, what quality do students need to be successful um, for IT programs that you see? What you've taught for such a long time, which students tend to have the same quality in order to be successful at, at UC? So basically, as I said before, you need to have uh, your will. You need your uh, mm. willingness to study. Uh, you have your commitment. Um, you pay attention to details, do your assignments. Um, that pretty much is it. I'll give you an example. One of uh, my students, he was an international student. He came to UC and didn't have a brilliant academic record. Okay, I'm talking about the marks or whatever, okay? Um, as we know, uh, the marks, academic record, just one side, uh, one indicator of a person's quantity. It's not the, the fair indication. So he's very enthusiastic student. He catches uh, every possible opportunities. So one of the years in, when he was at a study, there was a women's basketball uh, competition in Canberra. And then it's just a person to help them set up their IT for two days. Wireless network, uh, give a support if anybody can't connect to Wireless or can't print. So he picked up that job. It's two, two days, uh, very mm. simple. So quick. Uh, it, it's trivial, just nothing. But from there, that's mm -hmm. his launch pad. Afterwards, he picked up gradually casual work, uh, part-time work. Now he is working as a senior a full-time professional in one of the big organizations. Now, that's how he started. So, so mm -hmm. long you're winning, yeah. you catch every possible opportunities, you are being successful because so many Absolutely. opportunities, so high demands of IT skills. Mm. Yeah, that, it's really encouraging, really encouraging to see. And um, it's one of the, definitely one of the best opportunities for students to get involved into. Um, so thank, thank you, uh, Doctor. Uh, we will come back to you for question time. We will now uh, move on to Syrah. Is, is Syrah there? Thank you very much, Paul. I will mute my mic and stop my sure. video. No problem. Thank you, Doctor. How are you today, Syrah? I'm good, you know? That's good, yes, I'm very good. So where are you today, Syrah? You're, you're in Canberra right now? Yes, I'm in Canberra right now. Oh, yeah. that's great. That's great. And thank you for your time once again um, to talk with us on, on your spare time on your weekend. Um, we, we really appreciate it. Yeah, that's fine. So, great. Um, so, yeah, I have a few questions for you. Um, so, how did you, how did you first hear about University of Canberra and what got you interested in studying there? Because, um, you know, Canberra may not be the first destination on students' mind if you're not from Canberra yourself. Yeah, um, okay, so I was told about uh, University of Canberra from my education agent, actually. Um, yep. UC offered a Bachelor of Software Engineering course, and when I reviewed the units on their website, uh, it was very interesting and something that I, and majority of them was like things I wanted to learn. And UC, uh, UC also gave me a direct second year entry because of my diploma mm. I did prior to enrolling. Um, mm. So, I also did a bit of research about the university and I found out they do work integrated learning, which allows me to do an internship uh, during my time uh, at UC and like part of my semester as a unit. Um, and wow. I found this really uh, good because um, it's good to have some experience later on because when you graduate, um, you can add it to your resume and a lot of employees will look at it and be like, okay, she has a bit of experience. Um, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, employers in Australia really do value that, uh, that employment experience uh, during your time at, at university. Um, um, but you're, you, you came from uh, overseas and before you came to Australia, um, what was your opinion of Canberra before going there? Um, you definitely saw the university, um, you thought the courses were good, but what did you um, think about Canberra um, before going there? Um, okay, so I have never, like, to be honest, I've never heard of Canberra before. Like, mm -hmm. when I thought about, I just wanted to go to Australia to learn. And 
um, I've only heard about the big cities, um, Melbourne, Sydney, uh, yep. Adelaide, and because that's where all my friends are studying or were going to study. Mm -hmm. And my education agent just told me about Canberra and she told me it was a very beautiful place and very similar to home. Um, I'm from Malaysia. Um, yep. So it's, it, it's very nature, like my state is very um, nature, like a lot of green. And then um, she told me it's very similar to how Canberra is. So that, that was also another factor that um, made me consider Canberra. Mm -hmm. So how long have you uh, been living in Canberra for now? Uh, about a year now. Yeah, I came last about year. About a year. So what, what would you say are three aspects of Canberra that international students would enjoy um, about living in Canberra? Yeah, um, so I would say the first major thing is that because you're in the capital of Australia, there are so many mm. things that's here, um, like the National Portrait Gallery, the Parliament House where you can take pictures, um, the War Memorial, the National mm -hmm. Library, and so on. You know, there's so many things that you could do here. Um, every mm -hmm. weekend, there's something new. Um, another thing is that Canberra has a lot of festivals. Um, the most recent one before the whole pandemic thing um, was um, there was uh, the Multicultural Festival, the National Multicultural Festival. And that is one of the things I look forward to. Um, and because you get to try so many food and experience so many performance from so many different countries. And there's also the parade where um, each country will showcase their national costumes and play music from their country. It's so nice. Um, mm -hmm. And also another thing that was really important um, when coming here is that ACT is rated the safest city in Australia. Um, um, this was really important to me because my parents were very concerned. Um, I, uh, they, I'm a young girl traveling, uh, studying abroad for the first time. And then um, when I told them about this, they were a bit more um, okay with me studying abroad. Um, yeah, yeah, so, um, yeah, that's great. So um, you, you've been how uh, you've been a student ambassador uh, at University of Canberra as well. Um, so um, could you maybe talk about uh, the campus life and the experience at UC and uh, was it easy to meet friends? Uh, was it easy to participate in events uh, that match your interests? Um, and w was it easy to meet local students as well? Yeah, um, okay. so at first I found it a bit difficult to make friends because I was a very shy person. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just always kept to myself. But then um, and later, like I think about a week or two later, I decided to go join the market day. Market day is a day that um, all the societies will showcase and uh, display all their events, upcoming events. And I joined the UC Engineering Society and the UC IT Society. And that's how I started making friends because of similar interests I met so many people and and because of that now I have key positions in those societies. Um, there's not only um, academic societies that you can participate here in, mm. um, there's uh, cultural societies like um, the Vietnamese society just and you can you don't even have to be um, a Vietnamese to join it you can anyone can mm. join it. Um, yes and there's uh, the uh, hobby society such as music um, gaming society, so many that you can participate in. Um, the university also hosts um, trivia nights and movie nights. So that's also like you wow. can meet people there um, because of uh, just like trivia, like a topic like Harry Potter is one very common one. Um, yeah, I've <laughs> okay. met a few people from there because I like Harry Potter as well. Great. Um, and meeting local students here was very easy. You meet them in classes and lectures and they're very friendly and very nice. Mm. Oh, that's great. That's fantastic. I'm glad. Um, and uh, do, do you live in accommodation uh, provided by University of Canberra or you live um, outside of school? And what, what, what's the experience like? Um, and is there a great balance um, between having a place where you can focus and study um, while also having time to relax and enjoy your time as well? Uh, no, I do not live on campus. Uh, mm -hmm. I live on campus with my brother. Um, my yep. brother actually lived on campus when he first came here. Um, he okay. lived at Cooper Lodge, um, which is one of the mm. uh, residentials on campus. He had a single room 
and he liked it very much. Um, it was very convenient for him, for him, just a few minutes away from classes, grocery shopping was just like 15 oh. minutes away from the mall. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, regarding the balance, yes, I have learned how to set aside time for my work, um, studying and relaxing time. Um, I do my work studying at the university with my friends at the library or just sometimes alone at one of the buildings. Um, then, so when I go back home, I can just sit and relax and just not think about studies for a bit and just like watch some TV shows or YouTube. That's perfect. Yeah, it's really, really important to find that, that good balance too. Um, my last question for you, uh, you talked about uh, you had um, there's internships uh, at UC and you've uh, taken part in some of those. Um, but did you also find any uh, part-time work um, during your time studying at UC? And um, did working or interning have any impact on, on your studies? Yeah. Um, I, the first work I did was actually a waitress because um, it was a family friend. So I mm. worked for uh, them for a bit. Then I left the job because I realized it was starting to get a bit more hectic, my studies. Uh, because as the semester goes, like it becomes more um, detailed work. So I left the job, but um, I'm quite lucky in terms of that my parents um, is supporting my study, so I do not have to um, find yep. much work. Um, mm -hmm. But the uh, current part-time work I'm doing is with uh, UC the, uh, as a student ambassador. Um, like okay. UC, uh, UC has a lot of jobs on campus from time to time that you can apply which is very good mm -hmm. for students because um, you can work alongside at university while you're doing your study. So you don't have to travel, um, which is good. Um, it didn't really affect my studies, but um, one thing is for sure that you have to find the balance between setting aside, uh, setting aside time for studying and setting time aside for work. Thank you so much, Sarah, for, for your time. And uh, we'll, we'll keep you on the panel just in case there's any questions for you. Um, we'll now um, move on to Tuen Ang. Uh, are you there, Vincent? Yes, I'm here. How are you today, Vincent? Oh, very well, thank you. How about you? That's, that's, yeah, really good. Um, it's a lovely day here in, in Vietnam, your home country. Very, very hot. <laughs> uh, yes. It yeah. is really hot today and humidity as well. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, um, so Vin Vincent, how, how long have you been, um, you're from Vietnam, and how long have you been uh, studying at, at UC for? Uh, I have been in Canberra for like over two years now. Over two years. Oh, that's great. Um, how about, um, I wanted to know, uh, during the early stages of studying at UC, um, what were some of the challenges that you faced and uh, how did you overcome them? Um, I would say it's a language barrier. It's the most difficult thing that any new student has to overcome that. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it is a um, discrete math because like before I haven't had any experience in learning math in English. But after a few weeks, it should be fine. And the teachers and all the lecturers is really helpful about that. Mm, they gave you lots of great support, I'm sure. Um, and it's yeah, good to meet a lot of uh, people in your situation and, and, and local friends as well. Um, what, a lot of questions that I get from students before they um, want to go to Australia is um, they like to know about the relationship between tutors and professors and students. So I wanted to ask you, what, what's your relationship like with your tutors, uh, professors at UC? Uh, are they quite approachable? And what sort of support do they give you uh, in between the lectures or tutorials? Um, I would say I have quite a good relationship with uh, my professor. In my past experience, uh, when I was having uh, engineering management, it was um, about like uh, doing the whole project for the whole semester. And it's participated in the engineering without broader uh, competition where you challenge all universities around Australia to compete to uh, introduce um, a, like a solution for a real world problem in Timor Um Along with the project, I also like my teacher also really proactive. 
in terms of like giving support and giving me uh, an idea what is that about. And aside from that, it's a really special case for me where I was a president of Vietnamese Student Society before. And mm. he even, uh, um, so Dr. Liu, he also approached me and said, hey, do you want to um, do a project with me, uh, give your Vietnamese students uh, members to opportunity to get, get a hands on a real project in a real world mm. where he will give some uh, some project to do it like during our summer time. So I think it's really privileged for me to have that kind of uh, relationship with the yeah. professor. Absolutely, that's really that's really fantastic. That's uh, you know very unique to have such great and close uh, close support. Um, another thing is um, how how is your experience at University of Canberra? How did it shape your development as a student, and um, how do you think it will lead you on to the direction you are uh, in your career? And where do you think you will uh, be? And what's your dream job? Um, let's start with dream job. It's about IT. It's about changing the world. Like we like we bring in the skills to the world. Um, at UC, it is about like we are like teaching method is giving students a fundamental, uh, the basic theory, everything related to IT industry, which is most, is really um, interesting. And also like what I found is uh, interesting about is a hands-on lab. So at UC, you give a lot of IT infrastructure for students to get hands on all the latest technology, for example, design, got um, all kind of like uh, Adobe um, application to uh, get them get used to the, all the industry um, software. And because of that, so when the student get into the, the field, they get ready, they don't get be like an awkward situ situation where mm. they don't get used to that. And thanks to this, I got an internship in one of the biggest tech and um, company in Vietnam currently wow. during my trip to Vietnam during the COVID-19. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's really fantastic. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. So um, my last question uh, before we finish up is um, what, what, what kind of advice would you have for students that are interested in studying at UC if they're coming from Vietnam? What, what advice would you give to them? Um, in order to be successful? If to give advice for Vietnamese students, I would say is be proactive, be fearless, because one of the things I see many new students coming to uh, Australia in general, because from my experience in um, Vietnamese student society, is everyone is kind of like um, a, a bit of like um, the awareness of them um, Australian. So they are not so proactive, which is give not give them enough confidence to talk with a, a stranger. And in Australia, it's, it's not a, something good, so you need to be more proactive to be uh, challenge yourself even more to like, talk with some uncertainty. So it's giving you more opportunities to learn more about like, Australian culture. And last mm -hmm. would be explore the, the culture in Australia because they got so many history, value, culture, mm. art. So you can learn more from that as well. Absolutely. I'm, I'm very, very glad that you uh, got deep into learn more about Australia. I'm very, very happy to hear. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's okay. part of the um, um, study of abroad experience, like where you learn more about culture, exchange culture, instead of like study degrees. Yeah, that's that's the other part. Um, you go to study uh, your profession or where you want to go in your career, and the other half is really to learn about um, your place in the world and and culture uh, is a big part of that as well. So it's absolutely essential and a, a good good skill to pick up. So thank you, uh, thank you, Vincent, uh, for your time, and uh, we'll keep you on as well, just in case any any um, any of our listeners have any questions for you. And once again, thank you so much for your time. It's uh, we're very lucky to have you and Sarah as current students to give us an experience. You're the ones that can tell us what uh, the experience is like. So we're, thank you again for for your support today. You're welcome. Thank you.
Okay, we're moving on with our webinar. We're getting close to the end of our webinar here today. And I uh, hope you've enjoyed so far. And yeah, just to let you know again, um, all of you listening on Facebook and Zoom, um, please ask any questions. Um, and think, get thinking of any questions for any of our panelists today and put them in the, in the chat box or, or message on, on Facebook Live. Um, then we'll get back to you at, at the end of this. So now uh, we will pass on to Amy, uh, Amy Lair. Uh, she is the representative. She's a representative for University of Canberra. She's based in Canberra uh, as well. And she has a quick little update for us all um, uh, regarding semester two uh, intake and some online study uh, as well. So hello, Amy. Yeah, hello, Bo. You can How hear are me you clearly, today? right? Um, I'm very good, thank you. Um, That's great, yeah. Yes. I can see you, and I, you, I can great. see you've started to share your screen. Yeah. So yeah, thank you for your time as well today uh, on your Sunday, and uh, I'll pass it on to you, and I'm looking forward to hearing some updates from you. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Uh, so good morning, everyone. Good morning from sunny Canberra. I really hope that you guys are enjoying the session so far. Um, so my name is Emile and I'm the UC International Student Recruiter for Southeast Asia region. Um, it's just my pleasure to see you guys today and just give you a very brief update um, about some of our very important information for semester two 2020. IT situation is affecting everyone and UC has been working extremely hard um, to try and to support our international students as much as we can. Um, just firstly, I think I would like to just give you a very quick idea of how UC is doing. Um, I know that many of you might not never might never heard about UC before. We are pretty much a young university. We have been operating for around 30 years. Three zero, and compared to some of other very big university here, we are pretty young. But as you can see on my screen, we have achieved some very amazing results considering we have been only operating for such a short period of time. We are officially ranked in the top 1% of universities and we are the fastest rising university in the whole world. In Australia, we are also ranked in the top 10 best university. And I think the ranking really speaks for itself um, it really indicates our education quality and our graduate um, outcome as well. The special thing about UC, I think Dr. Wan Lee and our student have mentioned earlier, is that all of our degree will have some sort of work integrated learning components. We have internships, we have industry-based projects in, incorporated in all of our degrees, which uh, prepare our students to become job ready and world ready. Uh, that is the reason why 89% of our students actually get a job after they graduate from our degrees. And they earn, they enjoy the average starting salaries of around 62,000 Australian dollars per year, which is a really impressive number. UC also offer generous scholarships for our international students, ranging from 10 to 25%. And um, I think a key point um, of studying in Canberra is that Canberra is now an eligible destination for an extended um, year for the subclass 485 visa. So this is the post-study work visa. So let's say if you study in Melbourne or Sydney, um, after graduate, you will have the chance to apply for a two years working visa. But now if you study in Canberra, you will get an extra year, making it uh, three years in total of post-study work visa. Let's jump into our main point today, which is our online offering for international students. So for students who are currently offshore, UC has come to a decision that we are going to offer our most popular courses in business, communication, education, and definitely IT courses as um, available for students to study online because um, we understand that right now students are unable to travel to Australia. So we, our faculty have worked together to identify a number of units that will be suitable for international students to study online first before they transition to Australia. As you can see on this screen, this is just 
a list of the courses that will be available online and for you to undertake online before you move to Australia. We are still updating this list and there are still more courses to be added into this list. If you guys go to our website, I'm just going to quickly show you our website. If you go to our homepage and just click on international, it will lead you to a web page where you will be able to choose. Let's say if you are an international student who are still offshore at the moment, just click on internationally here, and you will be able to see a list of all the courses that are actually being offered online to students. Uh, this is postgraduate degrees, and these are undergraduate degrees. And if you roll down a little bit more, you'll be able to see a list of all the available units that you can choose from if you decide to study online. For example, for our Bachelor of IT, there will be four available units that you will be able to study online. And it depends on you. You can choose to study just one unit online or two or even up to four units. So for our international student, we want to make sure that you guys feel comfortable and feel confident to study with us. That's why we offer a discount um, ranging from 10 to 25% through our international scholarships. And these scholarships will be automatically assessed and granted to you. Um, you just need to submit an application with us and we will do the rest. We also decided that there won't be any increase to the international tuition fee in 2021. So the tuition fee will remain the same as 2020. We also work on a refund scheme um, for international students and something we call no risk acceptance process, which I will talk to you in more details in the next slide. This is a scholarship, just go to our website, you'll be um, able to access a number of different scholarships. So this is our refund policy at the moment. If you are an international student, and if your student visa is refused, we will offer you a full refund of up to four units if you meet the following criteria. The first condition is that you are a new commencing student in semester two, 2020, that undertaking study offshore via online study at UC. Please note that UC college courses are not eligible for this arrangement. The second condition is that after commencing your online study, um, you apply for a visa and your visa is refused. The third condition is that you provide us with a copy of your visa refusal decision. Uh, within three months of the refusal decision and you have not applied for any further student visa and granted a new visa. Uh, the last condition is that the reason for your visa refusal is not related to fraudulent document or you are not like deliberately or um, intentionally trying to get a visa refusal just to get a refund from us. No risk acceptance. What this means is if you commence your online study in semester two, 2020 with UC, and later on you decide to withdraw from your study prior to our census date, which is 28th of August, 2020, we will also offer you a full refund of any tuition fee that you have paid. Um, so this refund policy is brand new before we didn't have any sort of this refund policy, but just because of the COVID-19 situation, we are trying to accommodate our international student as much as we can. Um, if you accept your offer for semester one 2021, and later on you decide not to proceed with your study, we will also offer you a full refund of any deposit that you have paid to the university, provided that you have not obtained a student visa and you haven't traveled to Australia, and provided that you withdraw from any study at UC and not enrolled in any unit prior to our census date, which is 28th of August, 2020. In terms of acceptance deposits, we have also decided we will do a reduced deposit amount for semester two, 2020. So for international students who are currently offshore, the deposit that we require you to pay will just be for two units. 
And if, of course, if you choose to study more than two units, let's say if you decide to study four units online, you will still need to pay the full fees prior to the census date. In terms of the admission process, um, we have introduced very flexible arrangement. We will accept new students, even if you guys haven't received your official result, let's say for year 12, for example. We accept the pending results provided that you'll be able to send us the official result by 25th of August, 2020. And we will still be issuing your COE, your confirmation of enrollment um, in semester one, 2021. Um, but because if you choose to study online from your home country, you don't really need a COE to start your study with us. In terms of English language, we will now accept the following um, uh, English test proficiency for students in countries where recognized tests have been suspended due to COVID-19. So we accept English tests that are up to three years old, which is really something totally different from our previous English requirement. We accept IELTS indicator. We accept TOEFL IBT, the special home edition, where you can do an online test from your home. And we also accept Duolingo English test as well, but only for UC College and for our English course. That is basically our main updates for semester two. I think now I will get into our Q&A session. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Amy, um, for that. And uh, there, there's some really great uh, benefits there um, and great opportunities um, given the, the circumstances right now. Um, to hear that the last three years of uh, your English proficiency test could be looked yes. at is uh, definitely something that's not done or offered by many yeah. other universities in Australia. So that's, um, that's, that's good to hear. Um, I just got one qu uh, before we get into the questions. I just wanted to know um, students from from Vietnam. Um, you see, there will also be a GTE check uh, prior to online study. If you want to do online study, there will yes. also be a GTE yes. check. Would would that also be similar to a regular uh, GTE check? Yes, exactly. It will be just a similar process um, for all yes. other students. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. And uh, you said as well that um, uh, high school academic reports will be looked at without their final uh, result. Yes. Um, what kind of um, academic uh, results prior uh, to receiving your final result what will you look at? Will you look at average average scores or what, what is the, uh, the criteria for, for that? Yes, so let's say students are studying year 12 at the moment and they haven't taken any exam. Um, mm. We still accept any sort of academic result that they have at the moment, let's say year 11 or maybe semester one of year 12, anything that they have on their hands at this stage. And mm. it will quite similar to a conditional um, acceptance where yes. we allow them to just study first but without submitting any official result. As long as they can submit the official result of year 12 examination uh, by 25th of August, then that's totally okay. Let's say in the situation when they cannot obtain the official result by 25th of August, um, mm. as I mentioned, they have the option to defer to the next intake or they also have the option to get a full refund even when they already started their course online prior to, you know, um, the 25th of August. Mm, great, that's fantastic. Great to hear. <laughs> so uh, let's get involved in these questions before we end our webinar today. So I see uh, there, I'm just going to scroll up to the top. Uh, can see, uh, let's see, I think there's some questions here. Um, Chris asks, um, what would be uh, the the high school uh, high school requirements? Or oh, let's say if you're getting involved in IT, uh, what would be the minimum mathematics requirements from from Vietnam? I think that was to Wan Ni Ma. Thanks, Paul. I think at a very uh, point of uh, today's webinar, I have answered the question. So for majority of us, we study IT, uh, try to get a good career 
in the industry, and math is not that core because uh, we rely on our IT skills to go to job, to develop our, our mm. career. Well, if mm -hmm. a person who want to pursue PhD degree, who want to invent next generation of artificial intelligence, then math in all front is necessary. So to have good careers in the industry, uh, we will train you the needed math, which is a uh, Digital math and your uh, high school math uh, is useful in a sense to help you to think logically, but it's not core, it's not core skills you need to uh, have a career in the IT industry. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. I see another question here for Vincent, uh, or, or Sarah could also answer this question as well. Um, what what would be uh, your estimate um, for minimum monthly living budget as an international student in Canberra? Um, if if you don't mind uh, answering that those questions, just rough roughly. Uh, I think I can answer this one. So okay. for maybe so. Um, an average of um, expense in Australia, for example, in Canberra, I was, I don't know what, um, so in Canberra is around 1,100. It depends on where you're living and uh, you use any uh, personal transportation, for example. Um, I'm driving in Canberra, so it's an additional about between 300 and 400, depends on how often you're driving. But for me, it's like, um, yeah, it's 240 for the fuel and an additional for like $100 for other um, related to like um, roof worthy um, the insurance. So it's mm. around between 100, 100 and, uh, sorry, 1,100 and 100, $1,500 per month for international students. What what about um Vincent? When you how about when you go out to a restaurant in in Canberra? I think a lot of people would like to know as well. Um, how much would a meal be? Uh, let's say you went to uh, a pizza shop or a salad or a cafe. You got some salad, or you went to a Vietnamese restaurant in Canberra. Um, how much would it roughly be for for a meal uh, in in Canberra? Um, if only if you go for an Asian restaurant and it's on average price is between like twenty dollars and thirty dollars per person. Okay. And if you go yeah. aiming for the hikers and it will be higher. If if you if you went to a Vietnamese restaurant and you got uh you got like a bowl of pho or something like that, how much how much would that be? Um a bowl of pho like a, a regular size is between fifteen dollars and sixteen dollars. On Fifteen and sixteen dollars. Okay, yes. okay. How how is how is the quality between Australia and Vietnam? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> um, I would say it's it's, it's really controversial, controversial because mm. in uh, Vietnam they is more focused on the traditional uh, taste, but in Australia it's about the quality of the ingredients. Like for okay. example, the mm. Australian beef is is way higher standard than the right. one used in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's like a trade off. So let's say both yeah. have a different. No, types. that's that's interesting. That's an interesting perspective. Uh, thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. And how about for things like um, let's say your mobile phone plan? Uh, if you have uh, like per month, uh, how how much would would that be? Um, if you are the person who is used for daily basics, not really for, um, uh, looking for the data, it's about $30. If you're looking for a phone plan, like for example, a Samsung or an iPhone, so it's between $85 per month up to $110 per month. Sure, it's yeah, quite, phone. yeah, it can be quite a, a big range. Yeah, that one includes the phone, right? Okay, 
Um, thank you, thank you, Vincent, for that. Uh, we'll move on to um, our next question. Uh, I think it's for uh, for Amy. Um, I can see there's a few questions yes. coming in from uh, Facebook Live. Yeah. Um, can you please uh, help us understand how we calculate um, the unit price um, for fee deposit? I guess that um, that's quite a common question we get as well, since every university has different ways of calculating um, the deposit fee. So maybe you could go through very quickly um, how we calculate that. Yeah, so it really depends on the course that you choose to study because each of our course will have different tuition fee. So if you go to mm -hmm. our website, let's say you have a course that you already are looking at, um, you will see an indicated fee for the whole year. And that fee, if you divide by two, because we have two semesters per year, you will get the fee for one semester. And let's say if you normally, one semester student will need to study four units, so just divide by four and you'll get um, a rough idea of how much will be one unit fee. But of course, um, in order to know the exact number, um, just simply make the application and in your offer letter, we will indicate the exact number that you will need to make deposit in order to accept the offer letter. Mm, okay, that's good. That's good to know. Yeah, so move. Um, yeah, I definitely encourage uh, you and um, to, to go onto the UC website to, to check that. It's quite easy to, quite easy yeah. to use, uh, as, as Amy showed. Um, another question I see from a Vin mission is um, how um, for the because uh, some in Vietnam there's the uh, there's the talented schools in high school and then there's yeah. the the regular schools yeah. as well. So the student asks, um, would is the requ requirement different from the non-talented schools applying for a bachelor uh, in, in Vietnam? Yes, it is. Uh, uh, applying different. for a bachelor in UC. Yes, yeah. it is different. So for student who comes from a gifted um, school. The requirement will be lower compared to students from a standard high school. So usually right. it depends on the course they choose, but usually the requirement for a standard um, student from standard high school will be GPA around 80%, and the requirement for students from a gifted school will be 75%. Mm, okay, yeah. And I see another question saying, um, how, how is the quality of teaching for online, uh, for teaching English and, and teaching uh, um, Bachelor of, of IT? And uh, what, um, what, how can they be sure of the quality? Yeah, I think um, I just briefly answer this question and probably we'll hear a little bit from Dr. Wanli as well, uh, because he's from the faculty of um, IT. Uh, so for mm -hmm. our online study, we don't just offer any unit online for international students. Our faculty have really worked um, very carefully and after careful consideration to identify the units that they, will, they believe that will be very suitable for studying online. And we want to make sure that the quality of the units we offer online will be ensured for international students. That's why you will only see just a couple of units that will be made available online, not just all units. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Dr. Wally, um, would you mind maybe elaborate on that a little bit for me? Thank you, Amy. Uh, that was a very good question. So I uh, answer in two. Uh, I can answer in two aspects. Uh, one actually mm -hmm. Amy already answered because we choose the most suitable units and also the best uh, lecturers or professors mm. who teach deliver these units. Uh, I personally choose these four units, but I know who teach them. I have full confidence on uh, how they teach. So th this is basically what Amy answered before. On the other uh, side, I'm going to answer you this question more broad ways, link back to what I talked before about digital disruption and the change of society. Uh, in the old days, universities are the custodian of knowledge, but these days, knowledge is readily, uh, I should say information is readily available. You can go to Google or search whatever you want to learn, you can see many online courses on YouTube, on other social media channels. You can also see uh, Wikipedia, you can get information. So now university teaching gradually changing the role as uh, we are the authoritative uh, organization for knowledge. Two, we are in partnership with our students to help you to digest 
information into knowledge. Therefore, that became your knowledge. You have the skills rather than they're still sitting there as information. Now it goes to what we think about teaching. Teach, uh, you are professionals in training. You are in partnership to inspire you to unlock your full potential. So in this regards, um, I have my full confidence in this online partnership to help you right. to unlock your potential, to fulfill your needs, to be a professional in mm. the industry. Fantastic. And I see another question here, um, doctor, that um, if student do take a part in the online course, um, how can they uh, keep up the direct contact with the tutorial, uh, with the tutor, I mean, or the professor? Is there, um, is there like a channel where if, if the student has a question any time, could they reach out to you quite easily or um, you can add each other on social media, like WhatsApp or something just to ask any question? Is, is this something that you guys do, like have a direct channel for those yeah, online absolutely. students? Absolutely, we have a multiple channels for um, us to talk to each other. But uh, if you just think previously, there is no way we can have this uh, session together. Yes. But, uh, some of yeah. us in Canberra, some in diff of you in different cities in Vietnam, in other, mm. perhaps in other countries. So now we have multiple channels for students to talk to tutors and uh, lecturers. Mm. Uh, we use predominantly something called uh, Canvas, which is a teaching mm. delivery um, platform where we come to that like marketplace. You can talk to your classmates, you can have discussion. We also use another tool which is called Blackboard Collaborator. Uh, yep. You will come virtually just as if you are in the classroom and participate discussion just like what we do today. Now regardless of where you are, the important part is if you think about the future studying IT, that's why we drive the revolution, drive the change, because it's about information. How we get information, get messages across. We are in control of this. We are experts in this field. So yes, mm, yes. there's no <laughs> issue whatsoever. We will have a comprehensive communication interaction among us. Yeah, it's, fan it's fantastic. Certainly, um, you know, five, ten, ten years ago, it's not as, well developed uh, as, yeah. it, as it is now. There's so many opportunities to really get uh, close and interconnected with your faculty and uh, the academic team. So it's great opportunities to study online given the circumstances. Um, I see another question maybe for Amy. Um, they say the Sydney University delay their second semester to August. Um, will uh, University of Canberra do the same? Yeah, so our semester two intake is also in August as well. And as I mentioned, mm -hmm. students can um, totally just don't submit their official result if they haven't received one. And we have extended it until the 25th of August. Uh, for example, before you will need to submit all your academic documents, let's say in July, but now we accept the result even it comes like by 25th of August. And um, yes, students can study online first. So I guess um, for students who choose to study online, the intake date would not be a big issue. Mm. Okay. All right. I think that's, that's all the question I see for now. Um, I think, yeah, we're getting over time a little bit. So, um, so yeah, th thank you. I think we'll leave it for there for now. Um, yeah, maybe uh, before before we finish, um, yeah, I'll say um, maybe all of our members could turn the, their camera on and uh, we'll say uh, goodbye uh, to, to everyone. So yeah, thank you. Thank you uh, all uh, for participating and being a panel member for today. It's very lucky to have your time, especially on a Sunday. Uh, so on behalf of the Yes Education team, um, I'd love to mm -hmm. thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure uh, our students and partners got, got a lot out of it. It's, we covered quite a lot today. Um, we've shown the benefits to study at University of Canberra really is at the, the forefront um, of a lot of change uh, in, the, in the future. 
Um, and it's great to see the, the initiatives and the benefits for, for students studying online as well. And good to hear from students as well. They're, they both uh, Saira and Vincent have uh, had good experiences so far. And I also wish you, Saira and Vincent, the best of luck in your studies as well. And I hope, uh, and I'm sure you'll uh, get to uh, experience your dreams as well. I hope you find your dream job or your dream career uh, after studying at UC as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bo. No problem. Thank you. No Thank problem. you, everybody. No problem. And. Um, I'll leave it here and um, yeah, to all of our partners and students today, thank you for your time. Uh, if you have any questions uh, specifically for University of Canberra, please ask me. Uh, and if you would rather talk uh, in Vietnamese, uh, we have uh, Amy and Yen, uh, who I can then uh, direct you on to as well. Um, if you're more, feel more confident uh, to talk in Vietnamese, ask more questions like that. Um, I'd be ha more than happy to send you Amy or Yen's contact uh, and they can follow up with your, uh, any of your questions um, or, or you can get in contact with me as well, more than happy to, to answer. So that's all for us for today uh, and uh, have, a, have a great weekend and stay safe uh, and look forward to staying in contact with you soon. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks everyone. Bye bye everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.